everybody welcome back to my channel thank you so much for clicking on this video and taking the time to just you know watch my video and support me i really appreciate it and i'm sorry in advance if you can hear my dishwasher in the background it might be a little bit loud <laughs> but today i wanted to do kind of a more sit down video this channel is kind of fitness health lifestyle focused but part of health for me is financial wellness so i think that is a really important component of feeling mentally well and just kind of satisfied with your life in general is having good financial wellness. So I want to preface by saying I am in no means an expert on finances at all. I have just done a lot of research on my own. I took a personal finance class in college. I really like learning about the topic. I've done a ton of research on my own. I have read a ton of personal finance books. Um, some that I really recommend, I'll kind of put pictures of here because I can't think of the titles necessarily right now, but I know I've read The Latte Factor, um, I Will Teach You To Be Rich, I will teach you to be rich um, those are two really good ones and I think I have read a few others kind of all finance books will say the same thing to an extent um, so it's just kind of taking the basic information absorbing it and then using it for your future so one step for financial advice that I have thought is really important is just saving in general the principle of saving so I don't really even want to get too in-depth about percentages or things like that because what would work for one person isn't going to work for someone else. For example, if I tell you to save 10% of your yearly income to a savings account, that's not possible for everyone. Um, so starting at even like one or 2% is really, really valuable um, to kind of have a savings goal. Like for me, for example, I have a savings account with my bank and then I also have some other savings accounts. Um, so that's kind of what I wanted to get into next. Another saving account I have is through Fidelity. So you can use a lot of these different kind of finance companies, Fidelity, um, Vanguard, things like that. Charles Schwab, I think is one. But I just use Fidelity because that's what my family uses and we have, we put a lot of money into one mutual fund. Um, so I've already seen a lot of returns on that. For example, I've put in a certain number of money and it's probably increased by like 20 or 30 percent just from nothing just from my money sitting in there so <clears throat> I'm kind of getting closer to my savings goals from having a mutual fund because I just have my money in there and it grows and a mutual fund if you don't know is basically just a bunch of stocks together so it's lower risk um, versus doing a stock I don't particularly do stocks I know a lot of people do and they like it but it's a little bit too risky for me and requires a little bit more research and monitoring than I'm kind of willing to do. <laughs> so I tend to stick with mutual funds and I don't have a financial advisor. I've just learned all this stuff on my own and I choose to kind of just monitor it on my own. I don't feel like paying for commission and, and consulting fees and stuff for an advisor when I can kind of just monitor my own money. Um, so that kind of choice is yours. But if you are interested, uh, I would definitely consider looking at an advisor and they might even give you a consultation for free to kind of talk about your financial goals. And that conversation can be um, helpful as well in and of itself. So I kind of talked about savings and a mutual fund. Also, if you are working a job that offers you a 401k match, um, a retirement plan, match I would highly recommend contributing as much as you can to this because basically whatever you are contributing if you're saving $500 from your paycheck that goes automatically to your 401k you don't even see it in your paycheck your employer matches that if it's a matching program so you put in 500 your employer puts in 500 it's free money essentially so you are building your retirement that way and with the 401k, you're able to take out that money at your retirement age. And it's easier because you don't really think about it. Like you see your paycheck and you don't necessarily realize that it's $500 deducted that you added to your um, 401k. So that's kind of a good option. And you can just talk to your HR department about that. If you don't have that, it's okay. You can kind of have the Roth IRA like me, which is what I have through Fidelity, which I put all of the money that I put into the Roth IRA into a mutual fund, all with Fidelity. 
So I'm really sorry if this is confusing or anything like that. But again, I just wanted to kind of go over what my personal advice is. Um, and if you have more information, again, I'll, I'll, or more questions, I'll kind of leave a link below of the books that I have found really helpful. And those books have a ton more resources inside of them. Um, and you can even probably find the synopsis somewhere like Sparknotes. <laughs> Don't feel guilty about spending on things that you really enjoy because if you think about kind of more philosophical view of money what's the point of money if you aren't going to have a good relationship with it so one book i read by jen sincero is um like you are a badass at making money i think is what it's called and she talks a lot about your relationship with money what does money do for you how do you feel about it like really have that conversation with yourself what can money bring you and kind of how people will say money is not the key to happiness but money can buy you things that provide happiness and i think it's important to realize that and not feel guilty about wanting money um and kind of being able to talk about it with your friends and family slowly it's not a taboo topic and i think it's more useful for us to all talk about it more because we can learn so much from one another um so not being guilty about spending i'm just looking down at my notes here <laughs> um you can't choose to treat yourself in every area of your life and kind of what i mean by that is if i choose to spend a lot of money on nice athletic clothes which is what i do i buy lululemon stuff almost exclusively um if i'm going to spend a lot of money on that i'm not going to spend a lot of money at the bars and clubs and that's just kind of an example like i'm not going to spend 200 dollars at clubs per month but I might spend $200 per month at Lululemon on athletic clothes. And that might seem like a ridiculous splurge to someone, but to me, I really value having nice workout clothes because it's um, something that I just value for my life. I work out every single day. I was a personal trainer for a long time. I appreciate the value that comes in having nice workout clothes. But then on the other hand, I don't necessarily value going out to bars and clubs um, because that's just not a big part of my lifestyle. I don't see the value in spending a lot of money on that. That's just not how my lifestyle is, is kind of works. That's not how my lifestyle works. <laughs> so that's kind of, um, and you don't have to just pick one area. Like for me, I spend money on nice, nice athletic clothes and, um, I kind of eat out once a week. I buy groceries to eat at home every week. Like all of my choices that I've made to kind of make the structure of my life, I don't feel guilty about how I spend money. I have a savings goal and I have put all my bills on auto pay, put my savings accounts on auto pay, um, all these types of things so that any money that I have left over is kind of free money at the end of the day. I've already committed to my savings goal. I've already committed to my bills. I already have planned out how much I'm going to spend on groceries. Uh, if I eat out once a week or a few times, like maybe twice a week, then I already have that money planned out. So I just kind of have this all planned out and whatever is left over, if I have that money left to spend and I choose to go buy a nice purse or get my hair done or something like that, I'm not going to feel guilty about it. I'm not going to feel guilty because I have already committed to all my other goals. And I think that's a really important mindset to kind of develop. So I know this video was kind of random, but I just felt called to make this, uh, this video and kind of give out my advice of the things that I've learned so far. And again, I want to reiterate that I am no means, by no means, an expert. <laughs> I'm just sharing what I have kind of learned throughout my life. and some different tips that I've learned through books and just my own research. And I think it's a really valuable lesson to really take the time to examine your relationship with money, learn how to kind of do these things and help kind of schedule your life around your money goals and how you you feel about money. So thank you so much for watching. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. And if you did give it a big thumbs up, uh, right underneath there's a little thumbs up button. So just click that. And if you enjoy this content or other content you've seen on my channel, please subscribe and let me know what else you want to see next in the comments. I really appreciate y'all so much and thank you. I'll see you soon. Bye.